Hey guys, Ralph here. Welcome to True Power Trumpet Fitness on this magnificent Monday here in Connecticut. Life's good, guys. Life is good. Anyway, let's get right to it. Vacchiano, as far as I know, never changed an embouchure in the traditional sense. Never changed an embouchure. There's a reason for that. All of you that studied with him know what I'm going to say. But anyway. So, uh, yeah, I haven't played a note. I haven't played a note on this Monday morning. Let's get right to it. I have worked out a lot. Kettlebells and I rode my bike and all that, but let's see what we got. Don't need no stinking warm-up. So, anyway. E-flats. Little crest baby. <clears throat> Ending on a high G. Life's good. Anyway, actually that wasn't crest baby. That was barbed wire, Ace. Get your euphemisms right. So anyway, Vacchiano, as you know, I have a long history with Vacchiano, one that I treasure to this day. And from what I can tell, and maybe I'm wrong, I may be the only one left on the planet that studied with Vacchiano, Royals, John Moyer, and Jerry. That in itself doesn't mean much, other than a whole lot of longevity. <laughs> I guess it's the anti-aging stuff that I'm doing is, is working. But anyway, Vacchiano never changed an embouchure. Now, I'm talking in the traditional sense, okay? I know lots of absolute buffoons, well-meaning, but misguided to the nth degree. No matter what a certain player would sound like, the chops didn't look like this cookie cutter thing that he thought was right. It would change. And what would happen? It's like you go from this top notch college level student who got into one of the finest conservatories on the planet, all of a sudden is going back to the first grade bellowing. And even then, doesn't sound good. Now, does that make sense to you? It, it's asinine. And these people, in their pontificating way, condescending way, that they just know everything, regardless of the fact that they couldn't play a note in their entire career. Now, Philip Farkas was big for this. Oh, don't get me started. Uh, the person I am talking about at Manus at the time was a horn professor. Just terrible. Just terrible. But the thing that was bad and I didn't know it at the time. Just ruined. Very, very promising careers. Ruined them. Because the chops didn't fit this cookie cutter aesthetics. Not even what they sounded like. There's several kids that were very, very good. Um, Manus at the time was heavily into chamber music. Now, we had our orchestra. We started a jazz band and all that sort of stuff. But it was pretty much given between the, th the big three, Juilliard, Manhattan, and Mattis in New York. Juilliard and Manhattan, Juilliard was the big orchestral school. Manhattan loved their orchestra, but they were also a the big jazz school. They had a great, great jazz band. Mattis at the time decided they were going to fill their niche with chamber music. And they had top, top. We had the Empire Brass Quintet in residence and all this sort of stuff. Anyway, I'm getting off the subject. But there were several excellent horn players. You know, 
chamber players that had technique up and down, around and everything, just changed them, ruined, ruined their career. They were literally, they didn't last two years at Madison. They were off trying to be doctors or something. Hideous. And these guys had no idea what they were doing. Anyway, that is the embouchure change I'm referring to. Okay? Bacchiano never changed anybody's embouchure. He would say, look, you played on a red. What's going on? So am I. We'd think that something was wrong. But only if it sounded bad, he tried to fix it. Okay? And he did that with mouthpieces. He never changed a, uh, an embouchure, but he changed mouthpieces like candy. And he was the first thing to tell you. He's doing it from a mechanical point of view that you change the mouthpiece, and the mouthpiece will change the chops. Well, to a certain degree, that works. He took some not great players and turned them into great players. I shouldn't even say not great players. He's the first one that, well, not anymore. He was the first one to tell you he only accepted the top 2% of trumpet players in the world. So right there, but, I, you know, I refuse to listen to anybody say that he is responsible, was responsible, for Mel Broyles' jumps. Mel Broyles was a double C guy from West Point, accepted in the principal trumpet with the West Point, legendary West Point marching band, before he ever met Varkia. Phil Smith was a world-renowned cornet soloist before he ever met Varkia. Went Marzales was on his way, you know, by via Tanglewood and the Art Blake before I met come on. Miles Davis? No. Now, I'm not knocking Bacchiano. I love Bacchiano. His knowledge was unparalleled. And he would take every single person that I taught, he would take this this uncut gem and polish it and turn it into the finished product that we know of Mel Broyles and Phil Smith. But the chops, no. Okay? But, again, he did not change the embouchure. He changed the mouthpiece. And there are, no question about it, there are, were some players that their chops got better with the change of mouthpiece. The, the guys that I were privy to, like friends of mine, colleagues of mine, every single one of them went smaller. They went from bathtub bock to a 7C, 10.5C, a 3E, all that sort of stuff. That is when they got better, when they went smaller. Now, Vak, uh, Jerry, on the other hand, fast forward to Jerry. Jerry would change ambushes all the time, as I do. Change tongue positions, the whole nine yards, but they did not render you helpless. Like Farkas and all those, did not render you helpless. What they do is they take what you have and you instantly sound better. Now, very often, if the range of a trumpet player was played incorrectly, that might come down a third or a fourth or something. Playing G's, maybe a D and E is all you're gonna have for a while with Jerry's stuff. But the tone, power, and endurance were better immediately, if not the range along with it, okay? But Vacchiano never did that. And I abhor any professor that does that. It's just wrong. They don't know what they are doing. Now, if somebody was playing on the red, that was a big thing with Vacchiano. He would give them an enormous mouthpiece so they would not be playing on the red anymore. Okay? Again, mechanically, the mouthpiece is going to fix you playing on the red. Most times it didn't. But that's the thing. Okay? All Jerry cared about, and all I care about, is the tone and the pop. On one note, that's all you need, one note from there, and take it to better than Maynard Ferguson. Okay? Changing mouthpieces, uh, changing embouchures, if you are paying $60,000 a year at a, conserv at a college, and this Jamoke is going to change your embouchure, 
guys, I have to say, you might be better off just taking a semester off, transferring, take lessons with me in a 1SB, and then go, then go do it again somewhere else. All right? All right. Anyway, eat and drink your fruits and vegetables and live your life with true power. Not the fake stuff, true power. Love you all.